Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. We also have Instagram and Twitter. You can find us at TPM Videos. Taking a look into extinct aspects of the Walt Disney World theme parks is always fun. So today we're going to take a trip back in history to 1996, when a giant pink birthday cake ruled the Magic Kingdom. October 1st, 1996 marked the start of a 15-month celebration for the 25th anniversary of Walt Disney World. In addition to using 400 gallons of paint to transform the elegant Cinderella castle into a giant pink cake, they also created a brand new parade for the celebration. The 25th anniversary parade Remember the Magic debuted on September 27th, 1996, and moved to the beat of a catchy new theme song. The parade featured six main floats, the Crystal Castle, the Little Mermaid Under the Sea float, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin's Treasure float, the Lion King Pride Rock float, and the Enchanted Forest. Since the 25th anniversary was only celebrated for 15 months, after it ended, Remember the Magic became the Magical Moments Parade on February 1st, 1998, and that ran until September 30th, 2001. The only real change made to the parade was in one of the song's lyrics. Instead of 25 years of Disney magic, it just became Remember That Disney Magic. One interesting thing to note though about the order of the main floats in this parade is how they appeared in the order of their film's release dates. And I'm sure this was totally intentional on Disney's part. The Little Mermaid was released in 1989, followed by Beauty and the Beast in 1991, then Aladdin in 1992, and finally The Lion King in 1994. I mean, these are four main films that helped revitalize Disney animation. Without those films, plus many others, we wouldn't have had the Disney Renaissance period during the 90s, which was responsible for the boom of Disney animation. Now remember the magic was unique in that it was actually the first time a Walt Disney World parade featured show stops. Depending on where you were on the parade route, the floats would stop multiple times, and kids who were pre-selected before the parade started were invited on the street to interact and dance with the performers. It was pretty much the Move It Shake It celebrated street party of 1996, with kids jumping up and down on the street minus the pop music. Now, if you remember back to the Top 5 Castle Mistakes video, we said that the pink birthday cake castle began getting referred to as the Pepto-Bismol Castle, since there were a lot of people less than thrilled about the giant pink centerpiece. But the parade also developed a sort of nickname during the anniversary celebration as well. Apparently, it became known as the Recycle the Magic Parade, since it used a lot of recycled floats and costumes. But just how much of the parade was actually recycled? More than what currently gets recycled in today's parades? Well, let's start off with the castle float. This one is probably one of the most iconic recycled Disney floats in theme park history. So here, the castle float is being used for the 25th anniversary in 1996, but this float originally debuted for the 15th anniversary in 1986. It's been slightly modified from parade to parade, but it survived decades worth of magic when it was still being used well into the 2000s for all the incarnations of Share a Dream, Disney Dreams, and Celebrate a Dream parades from 2004 until 2014. If you want to really talk about recycled floats and parades, we'll dive into these parades in another video. Now, Disneyland also had a duplicate of the exact same castle float, and sometime in around 2005, that float was sent to Florida. So it's really hard to know which one was still being used, or maybe both were being used in Florida. 
but the castle float is still around to this day backstage at Magic Kingdom, making it over 30 years old. So who knows when we'll see it again. Next is the Little Mermaid Under the Sea unit, which was led by these colorful maraca playing fish. If you're trying to define Disney in the 90s, then this here says it all, in addition to the pink birthday cake. So the entire Little Mermaid float was actually brand new for the 25th anniversary. So this one isn't recycled, but there's apparently a little bit of recycling in the animatronic C band on the float. Conducting the Under the Sea musicians is a Sebastian animatronic, and the rumor with him was that he was originally built for the Little Mermaid dark ride at Disneyland Paris that was never built. The idea for the ride was completely shelved in 1994, so I don't know how likely it is that Disney would have actually begun creating animatronics for an attraction that wasn't even officially greenlit for construction. Either way, Sebastian was now living at Magic Kingdom, and he eventually went on to be recycled into other parades, but more about him will be discussed in another video later next week. The Beauty and the Beast float was also another original unit created just for the parade. It depicted the Be Our Guest scene from the film, complete with a Lumiere animatronic on top of the punch bowl. It was a fun kinetic section of the parade between the float and the push carts, but there's actually a bit of recycling here as well. It looks like the dancers' costumes are just the Be Our Guest costumes from Beauty and the Beast live on stage at what would have been MGM Studios at the time. That's sneaky, Disney. Don't think we didn't notice. Next is the most recycling you'll find in the entire parade. The Aladdin's Treasure Float featured a 32-foot tall inflatable genie, which you'll probably recognize from our video about the spitting camels. Most of the Aladdin segment was recycled and reused from the Aladdin's Royal Caravan Parade at the former MGM Studios. Remember the Magic had the same guard costumes? The camels reappeared, oh, and the genie float was reused but was slightly modified to replace the giant magic lamp with the magic carpet. However, it does seem like the single whirly units were constructed specifically for the 25th anniversary. The inflatable genie is pretty impressive, so it makes total sense why they would want to reuse this float. Now as for the Lion King Pride Rock unit, this was also created specifically for the 25th anniversary, complete with Timon, Pumbaa, Simba, and Zazu animatronics. When researching this parade, some people believe this Pride Rock float came from the Lion King parade at Disneyland, and this isn't true. These two parades actually overlapped, so it's impossible, and the floats aren't even the same either. But some of the Lion King floats from Disneyland did eventually make their way to Florida in 1998. Four of the floats from the Disneyland parade are actually still being used to this day in Festival of the Lion King at Animal Kingdom. And this Lion King float from the 25th anniversary parade was later used at Animal Kingdom in 2003 to promote the DVD release of The Lion King. The last float in the Remember the Magic Parade was the Enchanted Forest. This 55 foot long float had 1,000 pounds of foliage and a miniature castle on top of the unit. The castle would actually rise 30 feet above the float and would set off fireworks at the end of the set. It was also originally made for the parade and was a pretty impressive finale float that featured about 20 Disney characters on and off the unit. So did Remember the Magic deserve the title of Recycle the Magic? I don't think so. In addition to the few costumes, only two out of the six floats were recycled, and both were modified in some way. Even Festival of Fantasy has two recycled floats. I don't think there's anything wrong with reusing aspects of old attractions, within reason of course, if it fits the overall idea of the new attraction. So there you go, that's the history of the extinct Remember the Magic Parade from Magic Kingdom.
Did you ever get a chance to see this parade for yourself? And how do you think this parade from the 90s compares to the parades that Disney produces today? Leave a comment down below to start a conversation, and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. If you have any videos from the Disney parks that you'd like to share with us to be used in future videos, follow the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching! Click the TPM icon on the screen to subscribe to this channel, and check out some of these other videos which we're sure you'll like!